Hey, we're back. It's the Brian and Kendra show. We're here to talk about real estate. Yeah. Yeah. Usually we try to keep it positive. I'm generally a positive person with positive forward thinking kind of. Let's stop it. <laughs> no. But no more. No more. Not today. No more. This is an anti episode. Yeah. Stop you know it. what I'm anti? <laughs> Wet socks and cold scrambled eggs. Hmm. Old scratch. Cool. I know. It just popped right into my head. I can't even yeah. tell you why. I was just thinking, what am I really against? I'm absolutely against those two things. Hmm. Yeah. For real. I am. Oh. C cooked vegetables. Uh, I, yeah. You were so weird. I love my green beans. Oh, that was mm. too positive. You know what I hate? I, I got to be crunchy. You know what I'm anti? Taxes. <laughs> Man, I feel like that was oddly specific. Weird. What it's was like, I? You this know, morning? that's one of my Where jobs was I to get done. Today? Yeah. So anyway, we want to talk about some things you shouldn't do. Yes. Don't do these things. Do not. Do not. Stop it. No. Do stop it. Do stop or it. Or don't start it. Hmm. Don't not do nothing. Carrie Ann is going to go nuts over that. She. It's probably not going to listen anyway. I, I will encourage her to. I will. Do not will listen to this episode. I will tell her not to listen to this one. Can't be encouraging. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Okay. Here we go. We're going to talk about what not to do after you apply for a mortgage. That's right. A mortgage. Yep. Mortgage. Yes. <clears throat> okay. So, so. Yeah, go ahead. You just applied for a mortgage. How exciting. Yes. Step one. Step one. And then we're going to not do what? Well, we need to avoid a couple of things. There's a bunch of them. Okay, let's start here. Okay. Um, don't change your bank account. Like everything needs to say the same. I'm going to say that so many times throughout yes. this whole show because everything to, will go down you want to, to consistency. Yes. So you already have your checking account or your savings account or whatever accounts that you mm -hmm. have. Don't change them. Don't yep. get a new one. Don't move all your money to one or the other. Just keep them the same. Yeah, because they want stability and consistency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so don't change your bank account. Do not do it. Okay. I didn't actually realize whenever I printed this that I had made it all those negatives, just all so you don'ts. know. Yeah. I, I said what what to avoid, and it was don't, 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 no, don't, 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 don't. don't. <laughs> this is what it feels like with yeah. my dog lately. Okay. Um, that's another thing mm. I'm against is her very wet, cold nose okay. on me. Okay. Um, don't apply for a new credit or close any accounts. Yes. Okay, this is a big one this is right a big one. here. Yep. Right here. So let's start with don't closing any accounts. Don't closing any accounts. None. That's probably not proper. Don't close any either. accounts. Don't close any. Because here's what happens. Sometimes whenever you're whenever you get your credit report and you see, oh, okay, so this balance on my credit card is negative because of this, then you immediately, you're like, I'm just going to close the whole thing. And you think you're doing something great and you're really hurting yourself. Wow. Don't do it. Yeah. So I closed a credit card. It's frustrating me. And I was tired of that company. And so I thought, you know what? Heck you got in you. trouble from Connie for this. Just shut the thing off. And they did. <laughs> and it cost me a, over a hundred points on my credit report. And it was your longest, because I remember this, you told this to Connie. It was my oldest one. Yeah, it, it was your oldest account. I had it since account. 99. Oh my gosh. 20, almost 25 year old credit card. And I just, I was fed up. And What's done. your second oldest? Um, It'd be 2001 or two. I guess you're working on it, so it's not so, yeah. as drastic as it could have no, been. No, could but have been bad. So now, had you done that in the middle of trying to get a mortgage, oh, shoot. it would have messed it. you up. Yes, would have messed you yep. up. All right, so don't um, don't apply for any new credit either. So by the same token, it, somebody told me the other day they said so. I started. What were they looking for? I can't remember exactly what the oh looking for insurance, and then the next day they had like call after call after call after call. Hey, are you in the market for new insurance? And and that was driving him crazy. We find this whenever you apply for any kind of credit, you immediately, once you get that, mm -hmm. you immediately start getting all these offers for new credits, new credit, new right. credit, new credit, new credit. Um, some of them are going to look really, really good compared to your previous credit card or your current credit card. Don't do it. Mm -mm. Not right now. Nope. And interesting enough, you'll be at places you shouldn't even thinking about. So I went down to... Um, um, we was in Sorry. Austin. Um, my daughter's phone broke. We just bounced into Apple like, all right, we're going to get a new phone. 
And uh, Allie was like, all right, I want to, I'm going to put all this credit in your name. I'm like, oh, that's great. Was fill, she filled out the applications. There was this huge special that if you'd use their special deal, you get the special rates. And uh, I'm like, that sounds great. I did the numbers. Oh, that really pans out. That's probably the best answer. Apply for it. We were there like an hour, 15 minutes, hour and a half. I was so frustrated. I was like, I just want to write you a check so I can get out of here but I need to do what's right for my daughter and help her build her credit. Well, then the guy at the very end is like, oh, you got declined. I was like, this is crazy. I want out of here. Um, and so I just said, we'll just, I'll just pay for it. Well, then it, it, you didn't get the big special thing, which I can't remember exactly what it all was, but it was worth some money. And I said, all right, well, we'll just run it through my name. So they pulled my dang credit. I didn't even, I was not even thinking. Oh, so they just ran it through my credit only. And it was a whole new credit card. Not through Apple. It was some crazy citizen, something bank of some bill. And and so, so yeah, so it, it dinged me because I got another credit card. And so, and I'm going to cancel it because I don't need it as soon as it thinks. <laughs> so. <clears throat> that really stinks. So then it ended up not helping Hallie. Didn't help her. Didn't was- help me. Didn't help anybody. It did help her because it was like the, I mean, they, they taunt you into the thing. They gave her like an extra two year warranty. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But <laughs> so nonetheless, you sometimes get um, tricked into right. new credit so card. So be careful. And I thought it was just a, like an Apple or an AT&T thing. Sure. So. Okay. So don't make any large purchases. Pur- purchases, purchases? Or transfers. Yep. <laughs> purchases. Don't, okay. buy any, don't buy any large purses. So you have, yeah, no large Yes, no Louis Vuitton, all right? Mm. Okay. All right, right now, this is like, this is one of your big ones. You've had this happen. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> Tell it. I, I had somebody buy all new furniture three days before closing. Put it all on the credit card from that store. Um, not thinking it was a big deal. They just wanted to make sure it got delivered on the day of closing, and so they right. went ahead and did it. Bam, $10,000 worth of furniture or something. Oh, man. It derailed the whole thing. Um, Luckily, mom and dad stepped in, paid off all the furniture. Um, I mean, it was a big mess. Right. But if they had waited three days, it wouldn't have affected their loan at all. But instead, it delayed your closing, did it not? It did. Yep. So how long? This time, a um, week, two weeks? It was a week. Little, maybe, I don't exactly know, but it was not It was a week or two because they had to wait they had to wait till the credit report came back in to verify it didn't affect, push them under their limit. Without mom and dad, what was going to happen? Oh, it had been over. It had been over. And I think that's the part that is so hard to understand. Um, I've heard horror stories about about a buyer buying engagement rings. Oh, yay, I'm going to propose right here. Um, at our closing, it's going to be so exciting, yada, yada, yada. And that, then there's no closing and so, I mean, it's really, really important to remember that. Don't make any large purchases or transfers um, during this time with your yes. while well, you're getting your mortgage. All right. And those large purchases are anything that's substantial, like furniture, cars, iPhones. The refrigerator. Refrigerators. I try not to spend any money until closing at all. Okay. So we know this is tricky. We had one yep. recently. Um, they were moving up from the metro area and... Huge hailstorm in the middle of our transaction completely demolished their car. Do you remember? Yes. So we know that sometimes, like, you get into a real pickle. Just make sure before you take any action that you call your mortgage company and you say, here's where I'm at. What can I do? And, and get as many ideas as you can from the professional um, that you're working with just just to double check. Just definitely don't jump out on a limb and go buy a new car. Please yeah. mm-hmm. don't do it. Oh, the panic that ensues. <clears throat> All right, don't change jobs. Oh, don't co-sign loans. Oh, gosh. So that's tricky because a lot of times people think, well, I'm just co-signing. My kid's going to pay everything. All I'm doing is just helping them get the loan. But no, no. No, you are responsible for the loan, 100%. It's the same as whenever we talked about leasing and, yes. and renting with, with our seniors that those two times. Like, you're 100%. It's not split between you and your kid. Um, it's not on your kid, whoever you're co-signing with. I'm just using kid because yeah. that tends to be how it is. You, man, just don't do it. Don't co-sign loans while you're waiting for your mortgage before your house closes. Yeah, we shouldn't. I mean, co-signing you do that loans. Anyway if you want there's to. other That's ways to you, do but. lending without co-signing. So yeah. you probably shouldn't do that anyway. No. Okay. Um, don't change jobs <clears throat> or careers. So we've seen this too. 
Oh, and yeah. that was a month or two long. Yes, extension. The one I'm thinking of, and I'm sure you've had other ones. Lots I'm thinking of, of one in the last few years. Um, and I don't know, a week or two before closing, the guy decided this job is no longer for me mm-hmm. and and quit his job. And then the lender called and said, hey, we've got a little bit of a pickle. <laughs> and it was another month or two because he had to secure employment. Then mm-hmm. he had to have enough paychecks. Um, and thankfully, he was able to get employment in the same field that he'd already been in. So it really was as simple as that this time. But the other examples cool. would be when you can't find your next job or right. it's a different field and then your loan changes and you can't do this anymore. So don't change your jobs. Don't make your career yes. choice during the time of yep. mortgaging. Yep. Okay. Um, don't miss payments. Or be late. So you've already worked so hard to get your credit score up where it's supposed to be. Now you got to keep maintaining it. And especially during this this window, um, we're not saying that as soon as it's over, you can go do whatever you want to, <laughs> but that's kind of more on you. But during this window of applying for the mortgage and getting your house closed, man, you got to you got to really toe the line. Right. Yes. All right. Um, I'm like speeding through this, but the last one we went really slow. Yes. No, we got, we got time. OK, don't go. This is a good one because we just went through this yesterday. We did. OK, let me set up the scenario. OK. Okay, so people come in, they're buying their first home, I think, um, and they had $500 cash counted all out. It's all there. And what is this for? This is earnest money. Oh, wait, stop, pause. So no undocumented deposits. Do not make any undocumented deposits. Everything has to be in the account, be accountable for where it came from. How did it get there? Was it a loan? Because fraud Mm -hmm. is a big stinking deal and lenders are really sensitive Mm -hmm. about it. So um, kind of like the FBI, but anyway, um, so no undocumented deposits. Now they're like, what do we do with this cash? We need to pay the earnest money, but we can't do that in cash because it's got to be documented. Can't just go put it in the bank because it's got to be documented. Mm -hmm. What do we do? Okay, go. So luckily, so we stopped them. They say, go talk to your lender and verify how they want you to handle this money. So luckily they had had a garage sale the following week. I don't know exactly how they documented it, but... She had them fill out a piece of paper, document it, deposit the money in the account. She has the form that says, you know, whatever, I sold my whatever boat. <laughs> Grandma's China. Yeah. And then she <laughs> documented it. Um, and then, I mean, I'm assuming if it's a big enough thing, you probably have to have the buyer and the seller sign off that, hey, I bought it, sure. use it, whatever. But none of it, your lender will know how that needs to be documented before you put the cash in the bank. Yes, definitely. So, um, don't ignore a lender request. Okay, so this one is interesting to me. Um, generally, a buyer keeps really good contact with their lender because they know this is how I'm going to buy my house. Yeah. But occasionally, a lender will be asking for something and um, buyer kind of goes rogue. Yes. They're like, oh, we, that's not a big deal. We'll probably, be, we'll probably close without that. We'll probably close without that. I've heard them say that. Like, no, if no, they want won't. it. <laughs> What's interesting, though, is we've seen sometimes where like a borrower will just quit talking to their lender, but they're still talking to us. The lender's like, we can't do anything. We're waiting on something. And so I'm just saying this again, if you'll allow your lender to talk to me, a lot of times I can help both of you. Yes. Um. So don't ignore them. If they need something, even if you feel like you've already given it to them three times, that's okay. Go ahead and give it to them again because yeah. um, we want to get this done and this is how we're going to do it. And I really feel like the pain right now is it'll be nothing once you're in your home. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know it's a pain in the rear. I remember doing my mortgages. So many things. It is such a hassle. But as soon as you're done, you're like, oh, I love my lender. Yeah. It's so great. All right. Don't make any financial gifts without documentation. Don't receive or give financial gifts without proper documentation. Hit that. Yeah. I don't know why it's receiving. I don't know why giving it makes a difference, I guess, unless you're... I think because if you give too large of a gift and they were relying on your cash reserves for your reserves after closing, okay, maybe that could be. So if you give, I don't know, if you've got fifteen thousand in your savings account and you gift your child ten thousand, um, your lender might not care for that because it affects how they view your worthiness, your credit worthiness, not your personal worthiness. Right. You're still very worthy. Yes. How kind of you to share with your kid? But okay, what else? So I think that the financial gift is a. So back in the day. There were people trying to get rid of their homes and the market was crashing. And so what they were doing was they were saying, well, we'll give you $10,000 if you'll buy our house. Mm-hmm. And you can use that as closing. You can use that as. Right. And so, well, they, oh, shoot, you got to have it. 
um, oh, I can't just give you 10000 now because we can only pay X percentage of your closing costs. Okay, well, I'm going to give it to you in cash and you deposit in your account and then you do it. Um, and we had a lot of this going on uh, back in 7, 8, 2007, 2008 um, to, to help buyers get in houses and help builders and people get rid of their homes, you know, so they were marking <laughs> up homes. And so that's why I think it's about really strict. So after that 08 crash, um, lending has tightened up a substantial amount. I'm talking, we've had to justify, I'm going backwards a little, we've had to justify $100 cash deposits. Right. Like, hey, where'd this $100 come from? Why did you deposit this cash in your account? So all of our, all of the accounts, my kids and my accounts are um, our bank calls it a relationship. We talked about yeah. this yesterday. Yeah. Our accounts have a relationship so that um, I think it really came down to so I could put money in their accounts. Yes. If there were little circumstances. But it came down to this. Um, Anya, will you please run to the grocery store for me? And then I would put money in her account. She'd go get whatever I need. She'd bring it back home. Same with my son or, or whatever the case would. Mm. Whenever Anya bought her home, the lender called and she was like, Kendra, what on earth are all these little ten, fifteen, thirty-five dollars between you and Anya? Well, that's when she went and picked up this. This is when she picked up dinner. This is when she bought milk. Like it was that's all it was. I had to write a letter to document that I was giving Anya because I don't carry cash. Mm -hmm. That was literally what I had to do so that she could buy her home, which is hilarious. But I, but it comes back down to that. I mean, by the end of the month, it was probably quite a sum. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, yeah. <laughs> You're like, why can't you just carry cash? Yes. Because uh, then I spend it. Then you spend it. Yeah. So anyway, okay. So just remember that too. We're all in the same boat. We've all done this. Yeah. So yeah, any yeah. So anything cash transactions inside your bank accounts <laughs> can 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 trigger more documentation. So. Just keep the cash out. Cracks me up. All right. Do not overdraw your accounts. This one probably sounds a little bit duh, um, but you may have never overdrafted your account until you're in the <laughs> middle of your transaction. And yeah. then you're like, oh, oh shoot. <laughs> how did that happen? Don't do it. You've yeah. got to really, this is when it's like extra vigilant because um, you don't want to do that. That can really create a red flag and it can really stop or pause things for a bit. Yeah. Um, do not alter your financial profile. This is just a repeat of everything else. Yes. Don't yeah. take on additional debts. Don't alter any of your additional loans. Don't change anything about what you've already done. Now, like we said, we said, we said all these things. Yeah. But all of this comes under the umbrella of unless your mortgage lender tells you to. Because some of your, sometimes they're going to say, like, I mean, I can hear Connie, I can hear Steve Ruprecht and Keith and some of these different ones that we've worked with. And, and, and I know that they're going to advise you at different times. They're going to say, you need to do this with this card or um, do pay off this loan. Do not pay off this loan. Pay this one down here because they're going to help you get to the right spot so that you have the security in your loan approval. Do do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. I said do do. Okay. <clears throat> Definitely do those things that they're asking you to. But if you just are just, I've got to get that paid off and I've got to do it right now because all of a sudden it's really bothering you. Don't do anything until you call and talk to them. Yeah. I mean, right? anything you're going to do loan wise. If you're like, hey, I'm going to buy a house in six months. Don't just go on a rampage of debt payoff or reconciliation. Red, rec reconciliation. Reconciliation. You can I'm reconcile. I'm just let you struggle, but Nathan's got your back. Yes. So there you go. So don't go through that. Just trying to clean up your debt and clean up your stuff. Go talk to a lender first. Like that. They'll, they'll, there's a strategic way to do it to leverage your credit to its maximum potential. We had a buyer recently, I'm, and I almost like I need to have them come on the show. Is really what I think. I don't know if they would be willing to do that, but. But they were, their story has just really got me so impressed because they had talked to a lender or two and were sure they couldn't buy for another year at the most. Right. And they ended up getting hooked up with, an, with a different lender who quickly looked at everything, did all of the evaluations up front. So, um, so she pulled their credit. She looked at all of their debt. She did all of the things, look at their income, looked at what they would have for cash reserves after closing. And then she was able to advise. 
do this, do this, we'll close in two months. And we did. And it was incredible. Like, and the joy from that, from thinking it's going to be over a year before, and they were thinking they were going to be kicked out of the rental that they had because the people they were renting from were thinking about selling or something. I don't remember what that part of the story was. So they had some anxiety going on here. Like, we got to find something one way or the, one way or another. So the joy of them getting to close was so, it's just so cool. Like, it's so exciting to be a part of that. Yeah. And what's frustrating about that deal is, is like those buyers, we'd talk to them and then we talked to their lender and it wasn't a normal lender that we usually use. And they were very negative about, ah, I'd be along. For, and so like we told them, okay, well, right. we're just going to put you over here in the back burner and we're going to send you some stuff. And, but you need to be working on those things. Right. To be ready in a year. Well, they were very, I mean, again, it came back to this anxiety of they hadn't to move. Right. So, um, they started asking different ways to buy homes, which yes. kept the conversation alive. Which she and, and I had a lot of conversation lot. on the side. Yeah. With um, <clears throat> what about this? What about this? What about this? And and I'm I'm asking all the questions for her. I'm asking every time she asks something. Okay, can we do this? Would you be willing to do this, Mr. Seller? Would you do this? And so then I think that's partly what hurt was the amount of no's that they were receiving. Like, it was rejection, rejection. And they were super cool about it. Hey, we're just going to keep trying. Like, it's going to work out when it works out. Yeah. And then I'm like, enter Superwoman or something. Yeah. Well, there was a grant program type deal. And we mm-hmm. thought maybe this could get them over the edge. And so we said, just try and see. Um, and so it comes back to the, the I mean, you know, sometimes it's, you don't have all the answers. Like, it's, it's not all the... You need more information. What well, makes me feel and like so a second her, opinion of a doctor. Yeah, and so like, I sort of keep asking questions and pushing. Yes. It it helped us take them off the back burner and move them to the front. Right. Not that we put... I say that as well, a we negative. we didn't avoid them. We, we didn't were, avoid them. We just like, right. hey, I'm we sorry. We thought we were helping in the right way. Right. But the more she pushed and the more questions she asked... And that's because back to the relationship and communication. We The more you communicate with us... The better we can help you. Right. <clears throat> so that was so stinking amazing. Yeah. I absolutely yeah. love it. So don't not communicate. Yeah. <laughs> we have to tell that. <laughs> See, it's just so much more polite and fun when yeah. you say, please do communicate with us. Yeah. All right. What else? Do you have anything extra? Um, okay. So your financial profile, we talked about all that. Um, I, and it, so, yeah, there's, there's so many other things. Do not withhold information from your lender. So that's a good one because it's, sometimes you're like, oh, yeah, I forgot I own that business. Uh, that doesn't happen. <laughs> but if you – sometimes there's things you're like, this shouldn't affect my business or shouldn't affect my credit or um, – and things you don't think about. So like um, I actually co-signed a note on accident. I'm not even on accident. I wasn't thinking. I was in a hurry. It was an accident. Uh, I didn't remember I did it. Don't take violence advice from Brian. No. <laughs> um, so, so I was. Oh, wait, I wasn't supposed was, to read that. So I'm telling you. So, so nonetheless, I am going to give you a quick tip. So um, for those parents want to help their kids buy cars or a friend buy a car. So um, you you have to have a little bit of cash to do this kind of thing. But so my, my, I, I had a, uh, an individual I was trying to help out. We were working through some finances. They're going to be buying a house. They work for me a lot. Um, I took them to a bank. We're trying to build their credits. Um, we talked to the banker. We needed to build these two lines of credit. I said, great. So we found a vehicle. Actually, I, I owned the vehicle. So I sold it to him, but he needed the loan in his name. Mm-hmm. So I said, okay, we'll just refinance it. So I'll sell you the car. Instead of me financing it, the bank will finance it. So I sold him the car. And I co-signed the note, but that's not what you do. And the, the bank wrote me a check for the car. What you do is you take the money and you put it in a CD. Mm-hmm. And you put the CD up as collateral for the loan. You are not on their loan. So if they default on the loan, then it doesn't go on your credit. Right. So that's the biggest thing about these defaulting loans. They could be the greatest people in the world and they're, you know, three days late every month on their payment. Right. It's going to destroy your credit credit. So... That's why you don't want to do that. So there, there are strategies about um, loaning money or co-signing notes and things like that. So be really careful on how you do that. On a house, like if you're going to co-sign on a house, I recommend you put your name on the house. 
don't just co-sign the note. You co-own the house. Right. It gives you more leverage if you need to do something. Mm -hmm. So so getting all that, it also, if you co-sign a note, it goes against your debt ratio. Right. So then when you go to get your loan. It's then now it could hurt you. So all that being said, make sure you're, I mean, communicate well with your lender. Tell them, hey, I'm associated with this business. Um, my wife's in this business. Um, we have these joint accounts, um, whatever. I mean, if you got some big expenses coming up, make sure they know about them. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, my college debt is now due. I got to start making payments on that. So right. any of that kind of stuff. Yeah. So make sure your debt. Yeah, that's a big deal. Um, communication with your bank, communication with us comes back to make sure you're you're communicating all of these things um, in applying for a mortgage. We want you to be in a house. Um, I mean, I, I think home ownership is the direct pathway to wealth. Mm -hmm. um, most people who own their homes, um, it 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 helps you transfer wealth generation to generation. You have something to give to your kids. Um, at some point in time, you get it paid off, and then you don't have a payment anymore. I mean, you still have hidden expenses, taxes, and sure, insurance always. and repairs and all that, but it gives you that opportunity. So, homeownership's a big deal. That's why we do this show. That's why we do what we do. Um, we will invest years into people. Yes. So that they can own their own home. Yes. So, some people just need to rent, which is fine. And we're okay, and we understand those situations. Um, but if there's an opportunity for you to own a home, let's get you into the mortgage company. Um, let's get you into somebody. Let's get you into somebody we know. Right. It helps us communicate. Mm -hmm. It helps us be strategic getting you where you need to be. So we have lots of great local lenders. We have lots of vetted lenders that have have not failed us. Yes. And so we want to make sure that they are giving the correct advice, the right advice at the right time and, and draw out your plan. So whatever, we're going to pay this credit card off. We're going to switch jobs here. We're going to do this here. Right. We're going to sell this car and whatever. Let them do their job. Yep. Let's do it. Okay. Well, it's the Brian and Kendra show. Um, Give us a shout if you got questions. Uh, want to talk about houses or loans or whatever at 580 or budgets. I like budgets. Oh, gosh. 580-334-2303. I'm Kendra Brown, 580-216-0090. All right. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.